Introducing the new Sony FE 20-70mm f4G lens. Uh, awesome. I can't believe they uh, came out with this one. It's such a strange and new focal length that no one's ever made before. And of course, this is roughly equivalent to 30-105 to in APS-C or in punch-in mode. Let's dig deep on this one and take a look at images and a PowerPoint. Here we go. Okay, Sony says this is a new standard zoom that also covers the super wide range, and they're right. Uh, I've been shooting this thing for about five days. It's really, really amazing. Uh, the size and weight, let's start there. Uh, this lens only weighs 488 grams, which is 17.2 ounces, and it only has a 72 millimeter filter size instead of 77. Now this is uh, 3 by 4 inches roughly in size, but it's smaller than that because it's not square, it's round. Um, and if you look at the, and compare it to the 24-105G and the 24-728 GM2, those lens both weigh in at 1.5 pounds, and so this one's got those beat by almost a half a pound. Really, really impressive. Here's how they stack up literally next to each other. Uh, the, the 2070G at the far left is clearly smaller and shorter um, and in, you know, shorter in circumference as well uh, than the other two. Um, and it's just really obvious the difference. Now, I cheated a little bit because I didn't take my filters off. The lens in the middle on my right, on the right, those are mine. Uh, I just don't take filters off for any reason. So, uh, but still, you can see how different they are. The price in the United States is going to be $1,099, uh, which I think is a pretty smoking deal, especially when you consider that that's less than the 24 to 105 um, and half the price of the 24-728 GM2. Uh, pretty amazing price point there. I thought they would have gone higher, uh, but I'm glad they stayed low. This uh, lens has two extreme linear AF motors. You've been hearing that a lot if you've been watching these lens announcements in the last couple of years. Uh, the motor assembly in this lens is the same one that's in the 51.2 G Master. It's the same one that's in the 24 G Master 2 and the 7200 G Master 2. It's the same motor setup that's in the 400 2.8 and the 600 F4. The, these lenses focus so fast, so this one's no different. This is a super fast and deadly silent autofocus motor system. Um, it's 60% faster than a 24 to 70 Zeiss, which, you know, honestly isn't saying that much, but um, it's still much faster. It, this lens has internal focus. It does not have internal zoom, but the internal focus is important because filters won't rotate when you're autofocusing or zooming. Um, as in most of the other lenses that Sony's come out with recently, the autofocus only moves center optics in the middle of the lens and not an up front. So it just makes it balance a little differently. And of course, it tracks better in autofocus too. This lens, like all the other more recent lenses, is dust and moisture sealed, which includes all the button switches, the lens flange. Uh, pretty much Sony's really figuring this out. They really are getting really good at making these things not waterproof, but very resistant to moisture. One of the things that people I think are going to miss is the 9.8 minimum focus distance. In zooms of this type, uh, of course there isn't one of this type, but in zooms, wide angle zooms typically, um, you can't get as close to things at 70 millimeter as you can at 20. And the fact that you can do 9.8 inches of distance at throughout the entire zoom range is pretty phenomenal. Uh, I think people are going to miss that. But uh, anyway, so it just adds to an already huge range of zoom that you can go close to things as well. It's really a benefit. Video advantages of this lens are pretty huge. Uh, I believe this is the perfect normal lens for FX3, A7S2, and 3. Uh, FX6 and even the FX9. Uh, I think there's a lot of people out there that are shooting Canon glass still on Sony bodies and this might be the first Sony lens they actually get where they find the magic of the glass and not just the magic of the sensor. So I think this will be a gateway lens uh, for Canon glass shooters that have been shooting Sony for a long time. We'll see if I'm right. 
This lens has reduced focus breathing, which will really help things in the video side. We're doing two shots and stuff like that. But in addition to that, the lens also has reduced focus and axis shift. Um, so all these things really help when you're focusing um, and refocusing live. So that's, that's a big deal. It has iris lock. And of course, the aperture ring is declicked. Um, this lens is very light, uh, just slightly over a pound. It's easily light enough to use on a gimbal. Uh, and when you switch from 20 to 24 millimeter in the zoom ring, the front of the lens comes out less than a quarter of an inch. I'm using an Air Moza 2 uh, gimbal, and I can go anywhere I want between 24 and, and 20 without having to rebalance the gimbal. Uh, it's very easy to do. Um, so I'm really encouraged by that. I think a lot of people are going to figure out this is a killer, killer gimbal lens. Um, here's my personal lineup of G lenses, uh, except for the one in the middle because can't. nobody can buy that yet, even me. Um, the G lenses represent an incredible value, I think, to pro photographers and amateurs and everybody in between as well. Um, in the upper left is my 24-105. Below that is my Compact Prime 24G lens that I use on the A6, A, A7C. Then I've got the 12 to 24G, which I use for a lot of landscape work and some video stuff. Um, the 2.8 version G Master lens is better than this one, but this one's so sharp, I just haven't had the need to go and get that one. Uh, I love having just something smaller and lighter. Uh, the one in the middle, of course, belongs to Sony, and sadly, I'm going to have to send it back to them probably on probably today. Um, then you have the 20 millimeter 1.8 G. Uh, this lens and the 85 1.8, uh, I think, are the two greatest uh, deals that Sony has in terms of fast lenses that are sharp and not terribly expensive. In the back corner there is the uh, 92.8 macro, which is a G lens, and finally the 40 millimeter G 2.5 in the lower right um, that I use in the A7C. So, uh, oh yeah, in the background there's the 200 to 600, which people think is a G Master lens because it's that sharp, but it's actually a G lens. And so these are eight uh, lenses that are in the G lineup. It's not all of them, but I just, I love these things. I just think they represent an incredible value and performance at the same time. Really, really cool. So who's this lens made for? Well, I think video photographers and ENG shooters are, that are looking for more options in one normal lens are going to gravitate to the 20 to 70 G. Photojournalists are going to love it. I was looking at this the other day. If you take a 20 to 70 G and pair it with the FE 7300 G lens, you get a range of 20 millimeter to 300 millimeter in two lenses that weigh less than three pounds combined. That's insane. If you added an A7C to that mixture, you'd have a four pound kit, including a battery and a card. That is nuts. Um, outdoor wedding and event shooters are gonna love this lens. Auto racing and motor, motorcycle racing, MotoGP, where you hump all day long on road courses. Man, they're gonna love this lens. Sports shooters that want one lens to add to their 200 to 600 G for golf and other field sport events, the 20 to 70 G is perfect for that. Really, anybody that wants to carry less weight in bulk and still make really meaningful, good pictures with a huge zoom range, that's who's going to love to buy this, I think. So the new 20 to 70 G does not have OSS, but on an A7R5 like this, you can see how steady it is. It looks really good. I think this lens will become very popular among vloggers that want to go full frame and take advantage of the low light capabilities of the, of the full frame cameras and just the gorgeous optics that they offer. Now I'm holding this out at arm's length and we're in, we're in active steady shot which has a little bit of a crop. Let's see what 24 looks like. So this is a 24 millimeter, still not bad, plenty of room. But I think a lot of people will choose to go back to 20 if they're not using a gimbal, they can go into post-production software, like Final Cut or whatever, and then they can add the, the study that they need. So I think this is going to be a very powerful asset for vloggers that want to go full frame. Next, I took the 20 to 70 G to a basketball game, where I first put it on the floor and tried it out as a floor remote at 28 millimeter. Then 
I started by shooting only vertical uh, sports and then I cropped the images in from vertical. These are all shot in the, in the APS-C mode at uh, 12,800 ISO. I was pretty impressed. The, the uh, lens is really, really fast. The autofocus is accurate and smooth and silent as you'd expect. Um, but amazing, these are all from the crop mode on the A1. Really, really impressed. So this is all 60p, 422 on the Alpha 1. And the lens did great. I used it both in crop mode as well as in um, full frame mode uh, at 60p. And the results are pretty good, I think. I mean, you know, I'm not the smoothest at the zoom, but this really worked. I'm really impressed. This is nice when you can slow down, do a little slow-mo at 60p. Looks really good. All in all, I was really impressed with how you could track free throws. Here's a full frame version of that. It was neat. Next, I went to a local cathedral and I wanted to see the big difference between 20 millimeter and 24 millimeter. So many people typically use the, the 24 as their widest lens, 24, 70, 70, 200 to go together really well. But the difference between 20 and 24 is pretty phenomenal. Uh, it's, it's a huge difference in, even though it's four millimeters, uh, it, it's, I think, uh, 10 degrees of uh, angle of view difference, which is a huge amount, as you can see from these images. I was just doing a little tripod work. Um, it's a good tripod, though. Sackler's the best, I think. So you can really see how when you get into a sacred space or a really, really enormous space, the difference between 24 and 20 is night and day.